In this tutorial, we're going to use Adobe Illustrator CC 2020 to go through Classroom in a Book Chapter 3, which is all about using shapes to create artwork. And we're actually going to start this one pretty much from scratch. So don't worry, you don't have to be an artist, you just have to put shapes together. So let's go ahead and look at our end result, what we're going to be creating. Kind of keep that open just so you have that as a reference. And then go ahead and let's go ahead and do File and New. We're going to be creating a new document. So right now, if you look at the book, it says go to print. But if you go to print, all it does is give you a whole bunch of templates right now. So let's go back here to our recent. And we can change that preset details untitled to postcard. And we want our width to be, make sure we're in inches. We want our width to be 6 inches. We want our height to be 4.25. We want our orientation to be landscape, and we want to go ahead and have one artboard. And we're not going to worry about any of the bleed right now. Everything else is okay, so let's say create. So we're going to go ahead and create this document. So let's do a file, save as. Let's save it as first initial, last name, underscore, uh, Adobe Illustrator, classroom in a book, chapter 3. And AI, I'm putting it in my Lesson 3 folder so I can't lose it. I'm going to go ahead and push Save. So from here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to say OK to all this. And we're going to go ahead and add a bleed. So let's go to Window and our Properties. So we've got our Properties right here over on the side. You want to come down here to Quick Action. This is Document Setup. And with the bleed, with them all the same, let's go ahead and set it as 0.125. Oop, come back. Our document setup is going to be bleed point one two five. That'll go ahead and make all of those the same. If I hit tab, we'll go ahead and see that, and we'll go ahead and say OK. So now we're going to get that red line around the outside, which lets us know how we need to set up our art in order to make sure there isn't any white space around the edges. All right, let's go ahead and do a click Control S and save, and let's do a view fit artboard and window. From here, we're going to go ahead and work with some basic shapes. Shapes are composed of several anchor points and paths that connect those anchor points. So basically, think of a square as a path with four anchor points. So that kind of shape is called a closed path because all the ends are connected. Paths can also have distinct other anchor points and be wide open. And both types can be filled with color and gradients and patterns. So the first thing we're going to do is start creating our fruit bowl. So we're going to go ahead and grab our rectangle tool over in the tools panel. And we're going to go ahead and drag down and make kind of a long skinny rectangle. Now if we, oh, mine's filled with a gradient right now. I don't want it to be filled with a gradient. Let's go ahead and fill it with white. Uh, if you go ahead and see if you grab from the center point, because we're drawing what's called live images, we can move things from the center point without having to change our tool to say like the selection tool in order to be able to move it. So that part is pretty nice and pretty convenient, especially as we're doing uh, several other things. So with that still selected, let's go ahead and look over here in our properties panel. Let's change that width over to one inch. Oh, we want to draw a second one as well. Sorry. Let's go ahead and leave that as one inch is fine. And let's go ahead and drag a second one. So let's draw another rectangle. And that rectangle, we're going to go ahead and make one inch wide. And we're going to make the height 0.1. Oh, now, because I have these connected, it is going to change that height and width with, uh, it's not going to constrain those proportions. Let's go ahead and break that, switch that width to 1. Let's switch that height to 0.1. I'm not sure how I keep turning gradients on. I'll switch it back to white. All right, so now what we're going to do is take that center point, and we can drag it straight underneath. Oh, undo. I'm going to control plus so I can grab that a little bit better. So I'm going to grab it center point and drag it down underneath my rectangle over here. Do a control minus. All right, let's grab that one more time. 
grab that center point, drag it down underneath here. So what this is really going to end up being is the base of our bowl. And I know right now it doesn't seem like it, it could in any way become the base of the bowl, but it will. So let's go ahead and grab our uh, view, fit spread and window, our bit artboard and window. And let's go ahead and select out. So we're now we're going to go ahead and edit these live shapes. So we're, what we're going to do is we can change this shape from being a rectangle into something else. So we're really going to turn it into this kind of curved bowl shape. So this is what we're going to do to do that. We're going to make sure our box here is about three inches. So if I click on it, I can see it's a little more than three inches right now. So I can change that height to three and hit enter. It's going to make that nice and short. Or if I wanted to, I could do a shift alt and or shift just alt and pull. It's going to pull it from the edges. So you can kind of change your shape that way as well. So let's leave it back at three. All right. So then what we're going to do is we want to rotate that shape. So we want to go ahead and be on the outside so we get the curved arrows. And we want to hit shift at the same time. And shift will make it turn in 45 degree angles. So once it says like 270, then we are right. That's exactly where we want it to be. Now let's go ahead and change that just a little bit more. Let's go to our height and width. Make sure that uh, broken is on. And let's go ahead and change that height value to 0.75 and hit enter in order to accept that change. So now we're going to go ahead and start to make this look more like a bowl. So let's make the fill and let's choose kind of a brown. So I'm going to choose about oh this fifth one over from the left on the third row. It starts with the C50. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and escape and hide that swatches panel. So let's go ahead to our stroke and we want to turn it on so we have no stroke for that element. And escape again to hide that. Let's go a select and deselect and do a control S to save what we have so far. Alright, so now what we're going to go ahead and do is round those corners. So let's go ahead and select that smaller rectangle. Let's zoom in, control plus, or you can use your zoom tools. I'm going to hit my space bar and grab my hand a little bit so I can find that a little bit better. So now if we go ahead and we can see that live corner widgets when we do the selection and we get those little bullseyes. Uh, those are the live corner widgets. So if we drag any of those, it'll round the corners just a little bit. So I'm going to click and drag. And if I keep holding, it will actually turn red if I go, if I is saying that is as much as it can possibly be rounded. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead now and go to our more options in our transform. So the ellipses and let's go ahead to our link corner radius is linked on. So it's right here. Make sure that is turned on. And let's go ahead and change a few things from here. So we're going to go ahead on the change. We're going to go ahead and change the corner type. So we want this lower corner to be the third one over. It's chamfer. Maybe it's camphor. I'm not really sure. And we're going to change the right to match as well. So we kind of cut that over on the corner. And let's go ahead and hit the fill color box. So I'm going to go ahead and hit escape. Let's go to our fill color and go ahead and make it the same color as we made our bowl, which was the fifth over. It started with 50. All right. Then we're going to go ahead and set the stroke to none. And let's go ahead and deselect. So you can click somewhere else out on the pasteboard. So I'm going to do a view fit spread in window. See what we've got so far. Fit artboard in window. So I've got these two different elements. Now we're going to go ahead and round some individual corners. When we do that, we're going to go to our uh, direct selection tool. Oh, undo. I don't want to have anything uh, selected at the moment. I want to go ahead and select this one and let's switch to our direct selection tool. And you're going to see that we have our live corner widgets in each one. 
And we can actually double click those and do each one separately. So I'm going to double click and it makes that live corner solid. And I'm going to go ahead and set it to a radius of 0.75. Hit tab and it's going to bring that one in for me. So you can see how this rectangle is now starting to become a bowl. All right, so let's go ahead and click OK. And there's another way to do this as well. So let's go ahead and grab this one, turn it on, and you can drag it in until it turns the red. So there's a couple different ways in order to change those corner points. All right, let's go ahead and do a Control S and save what we have so far. And let's grab our Control minus and move this bowl from our center point down to our base of our bowl. We get those magenta lines that give us those smart guides. I'm going to do a control plus and zoom in. For some reason when I did this earlier my stroke didn't turn off down here. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that's turned off. Stroke color is none. Tab. Alright, so now I've got my beautiful amazing bowl. I'm going to make sure I click out on the pasteboard and hit control S and save. And now what we're going to do is go ahead and start drawing some of the fruit. So the first thing we're going to draw is the pear. So with the pear we're going to grab the ellipse tool and we're going to go ahead and drag and make an ellipse and we want it to be about 0.6 inches for the width and about 0.75 as for the height. And you can always go in and fix these later. And it's a pair, it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, when you're happy with it, go ahead and uh, so deselect, just uh, let go of your mouse key. So now we're gonna go ahead and draw a second ellipse. So we're gonna do it actually from the center out. So let's go ahead and do a Alt. Let's go here, right below and hit an Alt and drag out until we get kind of a base shape. If you do Shift at the same time, you're going to get a perfectly round shape. And you kind of see how those uh, are intersecting with the center. I'm going to go ahead and let go of my, oh, got a little big. So I go, let go of my mouse, then let go of my other keys. And let's go Cancel. I'm going to make that a little bit better. So let's go ahead and make this have a width of about an inch. And let's constrain those proportions. So it's about an inch high here too. Well, that looks really awful. Turn that off. Make that one. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and move that down just a little tiny bit. And make it kind of pear-shaped. It's a little bit weird, but it is a pair. We're going to go ahead and take our selection tool, grab both of those shapes now, and group them in order to make one item. And we're going to go ahead and use our fill color box to make that green. So let's go ahead and use kind of this fourth one over. It's kind of a nice pear color. And let's hit select and deselect. And let's go ahead and do a control S and save what we have so far. So let's go ahead now and start to draw an apple. So we're going to create some perfect circles with our ellipse tool to draw this apple. So we're going to grab our ellipse tool and we're going to hit the sh go over here, hit the shift key so we get a perfectly round item and we want it to be about 0 0.7 inches. Okay, and let's see how that turns out. All right, so I've got my first one. Now what I want to do is go ahead and grab my from my center point, I want to grab and hit Alt. No, I don't. I want to hit my selection tool. Hit Alt. So you get those two arrows, and you want to go ahead and drag that over so that we kind of intersect both of them. And you can nudge that a little bit if you need to. So now I have two circles side by side. And now we want to do, uh, we want to add another shape to the bottom in order to create the bottom of that apple. So let's go ahead and grab our pointer, go to the leftmost edge of the circle until we see the word anchor. 
Then we're going to go ahead and press and drag. We're going to hold the shift key as we oh, undo. Uh, we're going to press and drag, hold the shift key as we do. Oh, we want to make sure we're on our lips tool. Anchor. Okay. Right outside it. So shift and drag till we're right outside. See how we get those items that are helping us. So let's do the mouse, then the key. And we can go ahead and drag that up. It should be about the same. We can see we're a little bit bigger. So let's go ahead and make that a little bit bigger there. And now we're going to go ahead and grab the, this is called the Pi widget. So we're going to go ahead and grab that Pi widget and turn it. So we're actually going to be turning this element into kind of part of a pie. And we can actually, you can just do it by hand, or we can go here to our properties, go here to transform, and right here under Pi, let's go ahead and make this 180. Oop. Come here, Pi. I lost my Pi. All right, let's hit Escape and see if it'll let me out. It's not letting me do anything. Isn't that fun? All right, well, I've temporarily frozen, so for the meantime, I'm going to cut this video and reboot, and we will pick back up here in a minute.